This is Demon Slayer panel. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're going to be chatting about all things Demon Slayer that we can. I know that, well, actually, show of hands. Who, who has watched Demon Slayer? Okay, good. I don't even have to Hopefully, I don't see any holes in the ground. <laughs> if you haven't, uh, I'm, this is the wrong panel. <laughs> Uh, we're probably, we're not going to talk, so I haven't read the manga yet. My, my commitment is to, after season three, to finally read, because I cannot dodge spoilers anymore. <laughs> uh, however, for anyone who hasn't seen season three, because I know the dub is about to drop, uh, we'll try to avoid talking about anything in the current season, but I think probably up and through uh, at least Mugen Train, if not what's happened in the entertainment district, I think is fair game. If we can nod our heads and, and, uh, and excellent, okay. And if if not, well, you've stepped in it and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have emotional experiences here as we just close the bars. <laughs> <laughs>
it was nice. It was nice to have it beforehand, like to kind of connect with it. And you know, we were recording in the middle of, uh, of lockdown, so we hadn't really been recording. Um, we usually go into the studio because that's where they have well, like the engineers who do a fantastic and phenomenal job of making us sound so good and making our like kind of questionable timing fit in with everything else. And so suddenly they were like, uh, we can't do that because all of our studios are closed down and no one knows what we're doing uh, as far as going outside. And, um, <laughs> and we had to learn how to record from home and do the setups there. And so we're all like in this, it, it's an intensely emotional uh, movie anyways, but then we're all wondering whether we'll ever see the sunlight again and, and also recording this film as a bit of like a catharsis moving through it. It was, it was a really interesting experience. Uh, you know, I think it was, it was one of those things that was uh, a, a ray of sunshine in a, in a way in the middle of, in the middle of like uncertain times. And it was really, really nice to kind of connect with that. And, uh, and um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, y'all are crazy and wonderful. I, I, I loved working on this show, but I gotta tell you that seeing everybody uh, and getting to meet people and hear what Demon Slayer means to them, and, and, and this is with a lot of projects, but Demon Slayer, I feel like it's something special. Um, getting to hear what it means to people has taken this experience to a whole other level for me. Um, because, I mean, we, we knew it was gonna be an emotional one, but I didn't realize how it was gonna really impact everybody's individual lives from simple things of like, this is my comfort character, this is how I like decompress, to this got me through some really dark times and, uh, you know, and, and continues to. And it's just like that sort of impact I, I was not ready for, I was not aware of. It keeps me very like humble and grateful as much as I can be to, to have been a part of this period. But then to have been a part of it in, in this way um, and, and to, to see that love reflected back from everyone is really special. So thank you everybody for like <laughs> We don't do this for the vacuum or the void or for my padded walls. We do it for we do it for you, the audience. And like I grew up doing, <coughs> it's, it's nice to see that that experience reflected back in in real time. Um, but when we're recording, it's you know we don't get that. When you're filming uh, even something that's going to uh, you know for for the movie theaters and whatnot, you don't get to have that audience response. So this is kind of that part of this this connection that we get to have with you here at cons. And I, I, I never thought I'd actually be doing cons, but here I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and getting to meet people, and I think it's really special to get to like meet the audience. And speaking of uh, the audience and all y'all, I am actually very interested in leading this conversation wherever you want to go. So if you have questions and stuff, I'm going to do my best to like switch sides. I don't know if I was so good last time I was here. I see your hand right away. So we're going to start over here. <laughs> we're going to try to move the love in a weird spiral uh, through this uh, audience. Have you met any of the other um, actors in Demon Slayer? Yes, that is uh, the question. Have I met any of the other actors in Demon Slayer? And, and yes, I have. However, when I was first recording, uh, a lot of them I had not met. So um, one of the things that's kind of funky about how we record is that everything is done in single session. Um, the idea that we, we are dumbing, so obviously, in case you didn't know, this is Japanese animation. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, but, but so when, when you dub, the, the, technical, uh, the technical aspect of it is that they are trying to match up line by line. So it's not like we're even watching a scene down and doing full runs, unless you have like, there's some people that use like different systems where you can run a whole scene. But even then, uh, I haven't heard of many different systems where they're recording with the entire cast. So we're recording by ourselves with the voice director and we don't really get to meet anyone else unless we're like kind of passing them in the lobby and we say, hey, what are you in for? Can't talk about it. So I, I didn't really get a chance to uh, to meet a my wall that's opening itself. Um, I didn't really get a chance to, to meet a lot of folks except for when I was doing like workshops uh, around town or if I had passed them by and just got introduced. 
But coming to cons, I've gotten to meet so many more cast members from it. And certain casts, uh, I don't know if anyone in here, like I've seen this with a couple of casts, I've had the good fortune in, in, in Fire Emblem and Genshin Impact. <coughs> a lot of those cast members were like, you know what? Why do we not like get together and have a picnic? Why don't we get together and like hang out? Because we all spend our time isolated. So let's all get together and chill and like talk about this thing we poured our hearts into. And so sometimes casts do get together, um, and it's it's a less common occurrence uh, than you might think. We're all like you know busy uh, doing stuff and working, which is great. But it's nice to get to meet people face to face. And if it happens in a con, great. If it happens in hallway for for just a minute, that's that's fantastic too. I'll take whatever I can get. So yeah, thanks for the question. All right, we're gonna move right back over to you. Yeah. Thank you. reading the script as well. Okay. So, as a voice actor, when dealing with that, I can spoil it, right? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, we're, movie train is allowed to be spoiled. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when, when dealing with, like, death, as a voice actor, how do you prepare for that? Also, do you have a favorite anime? Or do I have a favorite anime? Well, funny you mentioned Bebop. I freaking love Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> 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 So yes, uh, Cowboy Bebop would, would, would definitely ranks up there. Um, well, let me see. When dealing with that, with, with like character death and things like that, uh, it, it's obviously a very emotional moment. Um, I don't know if there's anything I specifically do or like like a warm up or like if I, it's like do you lift some weights to get yourself in the mood. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't I don't necessarily have a ritual for that, but as with anything, um, you know, someone was asking me about this moment. One of the things to do in those moments of intense emotional uh, distress, uh, dying, there's obviously the technical aspect of making your voice feel like you're on the of death, or anything like, depending on where the death is, I mean, maybe, it, <laughs> depending on where it's affecting you. Rengoku is not sad. 
he is not sad in this moment. You are sad, Mark, the audience, yeah. because you are watching this. <laughs> and, and it's one of those things of like kind of disconnecting yourself from, and it's it's something uh, as actors, I think, you know, you have to, <laughs> they, they say like, don't become too indulgent, uh, make sure that you're, you know, it's just like kind of keeping yourself in check. And so I had to realize, well, Greg Goku's not sad. What what is he uh, what is he feeling when he sees his mother? This is a this is a beautiful like sacred thing. This is a question. He's happy for it, quite frankly, to see her as he passes out of this life, you know, and happy to ask her that question. That question means so much to him. And so I think it really is about other people, and 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 uh, instead of like hitting a tongue or hitting a, a cadence. And, and I think that a lot of those things, or at least my belief is, that those other things naturally flow when we start to ask ourselves questions about who else is in the scene with us um, and, and navigating those moments. So I, I try to like, I try to put it on there and I think that it produces the best result. Um, but that's, yeah, so those are some things. That is a long-winded no, answer to that question. All right. I saw your hand go up right away, and then we're going to move over to this side, I promise. <laughs> this is more of a fun question, but I want to know, uh, do you think you could beat Ren Goku in the arm wrestling? Because you're pretty fit. Could I beat Ren Goku? Could you also give us a tasty, please? Absolutely. Probably not into the mic. I'll probably blow it. Tasty! Yes. 
<laughs> very, very nervous. <laughs> um, uh, when, uh, when I started, uh, it, it was actually going into Mugen Train, and I, I realized that I was like, I guess it, it started to dawn on me, like, because we always want any job we audition for. Uh, I, I generally do. I'm always stoked to, like, audition for things and get into it. And then I realized, like, what it meant, and like it kept on growing on me about like, oh my gosh, this is this is like a loved thing. This is you know important, and and a lot of eyes and a lot of people are looking at this, and so um, uh, you know it it dawned on me that I was like, oh gosh, Mark, you can't, <laughs> you gotta like step up to the plate with this one, and so I was a little nervous uh, uh, going into uh, the initial uh, recording for Mugen Train. Um, as well, and I don't always get that way, but I guess for, for Rengoku, it was a little bit, I was like, this is gonna be something, there's just a feeling about it. Um, but I'll tell you what, gets rid of nerves really easy. Shouting tasty like a hundred times <laughs> before you record the rest of the script. It just, you cannot be nervous after that moment. It just boils it right out of you. It's amazing. So yeah, thank you for that question. In the blue, right back there. Uh, when I watch my episodes, um, I, I, I know some people don't like to watch. I like to watch things uh, that I've been in because I like to see how it came together. Um, I try to not be judgmental of myself, <laughs> but actors are generally their own harshest critics. Um, so I, I, I tend to pick myself apart or look over to my fiance and be like, is it okay? <laughs> and she's like, shut up. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, it's, I like, uh, I, I do like watching them, uh, and, and I try to put as much of that judgment aside because, you know, the job is done. So many other wizards, like the engineers and, and everyone have come in and made the performance shine even more. Uh, and, and one reason I do like to play through things and watch the things I'm in, and I don't get to watch everything, there's just a lot of stuff out there. But there's a whole team that is making this really beautiful piece of art, and and I, I just I want to see how it comes together. I want to see their work. I want to see how my work fits in with with theirs. Uh, to see if I can do it better next time. Did I do it service? Uh, do, does what I remember of how I recorded and how I acted? How does that line up with the finished product? Um, so it's one of those things I can't I can't really shut my brain off. From wanting to, uh, from wanting to like know more, <laughs> uh, it, it gets in the way of enjoying things sometimes. But other than that, um, yeah, I, I do, I do like watching it when I can like kind of calm myself down. It's it's super nice to just sit there and like kind of let it wash over you as the audience, and, like just be like, okay, cool, I'm just gonna enjoy this moment, or like playing through a game and just enjoying it. So yeah, thanks for that question. We're gonna go over to this side. Uh, let's go, well, way, way on the end. Okay. Yes. Oh, let's go for both. Both of y'all. Okay. okay, so my question is, it's going to the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the most important thing that you learned from the movie? Like, what was your biggest challenge The biggest challenge is, like, technical, uh, I mean, mostly. <laughs> it's getting the whole Source Connect thing set up. We were all, like, once COVID hit, and we're like, okay, we need to record remotely. And we're like, yeah, how would we do that? <laughs> people who, who had already been doing it, there, there are a lot of voice actors who were used to it. They would book their own clients, they would record out of their homes. A lot of us who just like recorded auditions for homes and relied on studios didn't have a ton of the know-how. So Source Connect is one of these programs that allows studios to like talk to each other and allows our, our audio to be captured. Uh, in real time. So we all had to learn how to use that. We all had to get subscriptions. We all were like calling each other, being like, how do you set this up? I don't know. What do you do? You cross the wires, red wire, blue wire, what do you do? And like, like three or four studios blew up and then uh, we, we figured it out. Um, it was great. Uh, yeah, so that, that technical challenge, I remember when I first like tried to connect with people, I was so nervous. I was like, oh my God, it's gonna work, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. And then like you realize that your routing is different. And I'm like, what mic is, what mic is on, what mic is on, oh, oh god, it's the mic over there, they're picking up stuff over there, that's why I sound like an ant right now, I need to switch it. <laughs> so, 
It was a lot of nerves, and, and it's, it, this is more to this is more to say that the engineers are such an integral part of the business <laughs> because they are doing they are pulling so much weight, and and I I feel for them. And when I had to do even an iota of what they had to do, all of us were like sweating bullets and being like, I have to ride my own game so that I don't clip. I have to be aware of this, and and you don't want that in your performing. Like the chocolate and peanut butter go well together, but not the actor running the soundboard. That doesn't. Work. <laughs> so it was it was one of those things. It was that was definitely a hurdle for a lot of us. Um, or, or maybe not. Maybe it was just me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it could have been. That was one of mine. Um, other than that, I guess I guess the other thing would be that you know when you're doing a fight scene, the booth gets awfully steamy. <laughs> so, yeah, you gotta wipe the outside of it to be like, all right, <laughs> what time of day is it? Um, so, yeah, that's an ventilation was another uh, technical hangout. So, I, I appreciate the question. And yours as well. Do not 
not do not voice this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and put right there. Thank you for that question. Yeah. All right. We're gonna we're gonna give some love to the back. Uh, yes. Right right back there. Yes. 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 Uh, sorry. Next to and I'll get to you next. Okay. My favorite aspect of Ren Goku, um, he does not give in, and he sticks by he sticks by his convictions. Uh, I, I think it is that protector aspect of him, and and I guess you could even say to a fault because it sends him it sends him to his sends him to his death. But there's something so pure and and like and, and wonderful about that. And I feel like, I, I think I was also telling someone else today that I was like, I've got some major imposter syndrome a lot of the times when I, when I look back at Rengoku and, and, uh, and even go back into voice him because I'm like, he, he's, too, he's too good. I like, there's, he's such a, I don't know, there's something about him that, that makes you like, that makes you love him and wish that you could have that sort of conviction. And and uh, that's that's an aspect of it that I, I just love. Um, so yeah, yeah. Thanks for that question. Yeah. And then right in front, I saw. Um, what is your favorite demon in Demon Slayer? Uh, gosh. Uh, the let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, the so my favorite initially I liked I liked the Tamari demon. Tamari. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. Like her. She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I really liked her. And in keeping with crazy uh, characters, uh, my favorites, I think, so far are Daki and Kintaro. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Uh, like very good pair. Very nuts. I like I like Daki for like the, the many faces that she wears. Like like from being that that uh, prim and proper and well put together. Mm -hmm. Into being that sort of like on the hand, like like pointed and incisive and, and vindictive uh, aspect, and then she goes totally nuts, and then you realize that their backstory is just like uh, so sad, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yes, those would be those would be some of my faves. We're gonna bring it over to this side of the room, right back there. Yes. Uh, Giyu. Giyu Tobioka, yeah, is definitely my favorite. However, I, I've not read the manga yet, so who knows? There may be backstories yet to come. Because um, there are a lot of, a lot of good Hashira out there. Although I must say, Tank, Tangan, Tangan's really good. I know I didn't like Tangan at first, but then the entertainment just, well, because I was like, he's just literary. That's it. And, but at the same time, I was like, Mark, you're just like, you're just loud and militant when you first, like, actually, all of the Hashira, when you first meet them, it's like clown cop. <laughs> it's like everyone is one note and they are so one note that you, you're like, <laughs> you know what they're about. You're like, ah, you're about like lovey stuff. You're about being lost in the mist. <laughs> um, you're being sad with rocks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, so it, it's weird. They, they all come across initially, but after that first Meet the Hashira episode, I was like, ugh. Who are those people? <laughs> and then you get to know them and you're like, oh my gosh, they're all so freaking cool. <laughs> That's awesome. I see your hand going up right there, and I'll get back to you, Gilman. Do you think we can in all the Nespotons? Can I do a Nespoton? <laughs> Hang on. Tanjiro! Tanjiro! Nespoton! Seeing 
what it's like. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a story um, about someone who I met and, <laughs> and why it really like uh, makes me love that phrase. Um, it, was a, it was a Marine who came up at, at a con to see me and he had been uh, injured uh, in, in combat. And you know he came back and he was dealing with things that messed up his head. He was probably lucky to be alive he had a lot of physical therapy to get through. Um, you know, it's, it changed his life around doing something like that. And he came up to me and he said that this phrase meant so much to him. And it helped him through his PTSD. It helped him recover physically. And it still helps him to that day. And and he was like, I love this guy so much. Sorry if I get like a little messy recalling. But I was like, I was like, you gotta be kidding me, man. Like. I voice this guy, but you are this guy. Like, and it, it, it made me think like, this is ridiculous. Like, and I know it, it a lot of people come up and they're like, set your heart blaze, it might be like cheesier, like this is their regular quote. And I'm like, if it does a thing like that for someone who's like risking their life in the field, I I can't touch that at all. <laughs> like, you know? And it, it was crazy. It, it hit me like a ton of bricks and I was like, I feel like that's what it means to me. It means uh, the weight that it carries is, is really special. And uh, and I know it hits people in different ways, but the fact that anything can hit like that, uh, it makes me have so much respect. And when I say it, I try not to say it lightly, you know? Yeah, thank you. Yes. 
So, spoiler alert. Uh, well, I, I did not get to actually meet him. This was done, so with these videos, since, you know, we, he's in Japan, I'm in America, they, they only recently opened up their doors, so we actually didn't, we were recording things separately uh, for that. Uh, I got mad respect for him. I would love to meet him someday. And we went through a number of lines where they're like, try to say this in Japanese. And I love trying to say stuff in Japanese. It feels so good. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it was, it was really fun. I hope one day that I get to cross paths with him because I, I'd sure love to shake his hand. Yeah, no, my friend is your actually, I send yeah. whether it's old, new, over, whatever, what role are you like, I would have loved or would love to play that role? Taste it! Taste it! <laughs> uh, what, what, what role would I love to play uh, out of uh, every anime that I've watched? Okay, uh, so uh, I know that some folks, as, as purists may or may not, ladies and gentlemen, point out on our stall! you have loved to play in any anime you've watched, whether it's old, new, over, okay. or uh, not? I mean, I mean, because of Cowboy Bebop, I like, I, I spike people. Woo! Spikes people, yeah. yeah! But I'm also a big fan of Studio Ghibli films, and I would love to play Haku. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Woo! And then we've got one last question here. Close this out. What? Oh my gosh! we got two last questions. All right, hang on. What's your question? Uh, changing my voice, so my voice is probably a little brighter and pickier, so it's kind of, uh, just opening it up into more of a chest place, getting that presence, and, um, that uh, gosh, letting it ring, like, uh, <laughs> now I have to, like, let's ring Goku's voice more, let's ring Goku's voice. <laughs> it's, it's kind of bringing it down into the chest a bit deeper, a bit more bravado. Set your heart, please. Yeah! Woo! Yeah, there you go. And, final question! But I couldn't, so I can't say me? 